What's up and welcome to Giant Bomb's newest show, Al Bummer. We're all the writers and talent of a music comedy YouTube show called Two Minutes to Late Night. It's a heavy metal music talk show kind of thing. Uh, I'm also a musician and uh, I make cover songs with our guests. On the show, we've had Danny Carey from Tool, Claudio Sanchez from Coheed and Cambria, almost everyone from Mastodon. And technically, that makes us music authorities. So each week, we're going to be listening to Planet Earth's weirdest and most critically reviled albums and trying to find something good about them. I'm Jordan Olds, but you might better know me as Guarsenio Hall when I do this. <laughs> I see it now. Oh, I was so confused. I'm like, who is this man? <laughs> I'm America's sweetheart, Katie Rose Leon. Uh, I'm Jeremy Hammond, and I'm a dad. <laughs> I'm Lucy Steiner. I'm a comedian here in New York City, and sometimes I challenge cats to fist fights. Meow. I'm Emily Panic. I am a comedian as well in this. Lovely city of New York. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And this week we are talking about an album that is half a return to form and half a suicide note. We're talking about. <laughs> Van... <laughs> Van... <laughs> We're talking about Van Weezer this week. And <laughs> my God. Uh, apparently this was part of like a two part album uh, release from them. One was just like orchestral Weezer. And this was I assumed there were going to be Van Halen riffs, but there was I one. Thought, I thought this was supposed to be a, a heavy Van, album. Yeah, I thought this was supposed to be a Van Halen cover album. So I was because really, they did a cover album not too long ago. <laughs> I was really confused by that. And then I did the, the basic Google to find out that this was supposed to be their return to heavy riffs, mm -hmm. which I guess that means covering crazy train. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> what? Okay. Before I have, I have an unbelievable amount of questions, but before we <laughs> dive into this, what's everybody's history with Weezer? Like, cause mine is, I have never, I never got it. I, oh. I never, I have never, they have always been on like the periphery of things. And they're just one of those bands where I was like them really. Okay. Um, nothing offensive, but just, I didn't, I kind of didn't get what was special about them. What about you, Lucy? I have a terrible Weezer secret. Oh <laughs> shit. <laughs> that I'm you're, you're, not, for this. you're not the 18, but really 16 year old girl. He was writing about that one time. Right. <laughs> oh, she's not Asian, so I think she's safe. <laughs> out, out the gate with the pedophilia. Here we go. Hold on. Damn, Katie. <laughs> um, I uh, my best friend plays this song, the song Pork and Beans by Weezer, which has a music video where they're playing all of a bunch of early aughts YouTube stars. You know, like the leave Britney alone person and stuff. Yeah, and like and, the soda guys and stuff. And and she'll play this for me. And she thinks that it's like our song, like it's our nostalgia song. And, <laughs> oh, no. and oh. I have never I have never had the heart to tell her that it makes my ears and eyes bleed. <laughs> wow. Uh, that's, that's Thank you for your honesty with us. <laughs> Yeah, we, we're not that great of friends, so <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't even necessarily call this a safe space. It just happens to be behind a paywall. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Safer. <laughs> Safer. <laughs> we're going to see how good of a friend she actually is. To see if she pays for. Her. <laughs> Emily is going to leak this to her. <laughs> the, similar to Jordan, they never really stuck for me. They um, they, they were always like not punk enough to be punk and not indie enough to be indie. They kind of felt like they were like uh kind of like feet in two different boats and like splitting apart in a, in a river you know like just like couldn't quite <laughs> in a river yeah exactly the rivers his name is rivers he understands the metaphor <laughs> rivers you know got a baby he is Cuomo. yes he is actually a cousin of the of I, new york governor andrew cuomo is he <laughs> no, no i don't think so <laughs> oh i i have a deep and shameful weezer past but uh <laughs> Uh, oh, Emily, did, did you have any Ooh. Weezer before I get into my my true confession? 
Yeah. <laughs> uh, I've never listened to a full Weezer album. Okay. I don't, I could maybe name three of their songs. I'm here. So that's... I'm here to make the sacrifice for the group here. <laughs> uh huh. It was the early 2000s. The towers have not yet fallen. Mm. Okay. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> I was so I'm going to take myself back to that time. Everyone uh, close your eyes. Everyone picture yourself. Or maybe they did. Anyway. Uh, okay. I'm wearing plastic butterfly clips in my hair. In my hair. Osama bin Laden is still plotting the destruction. Ready yourselves, giant bomb, because <laughs> listen, no video games, but lots of 9-11 jokes. Yeah. <laughs> bitch. Uh, I, uh, I was in middle school and I was still figuring out my musical taste. And a friend of mine was really into Weezer. So I got really into their first two albums, which was, uh, you know, the blue album, right? Self-titled and Pinkerton with the questionable songs about underage girls and lesbians you know i really it was before i really had music taste right so i think i was really attracted to it because i'm like oh these are guitars it's like a little more raw but it's not overproduced because like the only other music i'd listened to up to that point is like either blink way two or new metal so i don't mm. know how this got in there but here it is i'm just figuring <laughs> out my music taste and now guys i have to tell you about this and I'm coming out strong out the gate here. <laughs> Weezer was my first real concert. My other first concert was Weird Al. But in terms of like a band oh, yeah. band, Weezer mm -hmm. is my first concert. I saw it in Jones Beach on Long mm -hmm. Island, outdoor amphitheater. And I had the middle school genius idea that instead of having my parents take me, I was going to ask my friend to come with me and her cool older brother who is 10 Whoa. years older than us. So I was like, OK, just I'm like in be, the song. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to be the coolest girl in school. And this is my first ever concert. And we get to this. The seats are pretty good. I got the hookup and I had to pee the entire show and no one told me simply go to the bathroom no 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 i hold my urine the whole show until it's weird that someone would need to tell you that but well um sorry. i have a lot of problems in my life well it's a, in in katie's defense you know it's your first time at a show it is assigned seating at jones beach so you yeah. definitely could just get up and go pee and come back and your it seat would still be there seating and i had a lot of um this uh term wasn't coined yet but fomo uh, mm. so I was afraid if I got to went to use the bathroom and also I'm an adult daughter of a yelling dad and <laughs> asking to use the bathroom was regularly something I was screamed at about. So Aww. I did not ask to use the bathroom and during the, uh, <laughs> encore, they start to play only in dreams, which is a very long song. Wait, everybody picture it in your head. Everyone start there's playing a, it for yourself. There's a soothing bass line. It could be anything. And I start to wet myself. <laughs> and it is not a simple stream of urine. It is a torrential <laughs> torrent of piss. This is six hours of piss just coming out. And 13-year-old Katie does the first thing she thinks of. And I grab a full Jones Beach beer out of the adult <laughs> stand next to me and throw it on myself. <laughs> good play. Oh my God. <laughs> Very good strategy, I and think. Then, That's a brilliant move. Yeah, I had to sit on newspapers on the ride home. And I, you know what? I will say this. I still wore the t-shirt to school next day and I acted like nothing happened. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, I was just like, yeah, I saw rock and roll. I partied so hard. I smell like beer. <laughs> that thing, incident actually inspired some of Weezer's most sexual songs. I was gonna, I was gonna say, uh, I was gonna say, I pissed my pants at Jones Beach is the most Weezer ass song title I've ever heard in my life. <laughs> but they wish. I feel like that's more of like a like a a, a hockey hardcore band type. <laughs> down. Yeah, no, you, you're absolutely right. I'm just that's I'm true. Just, Weezer isn't I'm brave enough that. for a song title like that. Yeah, every time I've ever listened to Weezer, I wish I was listening to Hockey Hardcore instead. So I, I'm like horrified to find out that I'm the Weezer aficionado. But you know what? Once again, I'm ready to sacrifice myself for content. So let's yeah, <laughs> well, I mean, here's the thing. You got to uh, take center stage because I've the only thing I've heard in full before today is Pinkerton um, because a girl I was dating uh, told me to listen to that album. And that's how everybody gets introduced to Weezer. Oh, man. Yep. 
Most of it's like that's how I got introduced to corn, but that's <laughs> <laughs> and I was the person showing people corn. Surprise. <laughs> But I don't I'm just like, picturing the scene from uh, from Garden State where uh, Natalie Portman puts oh, the yeah. phones over his ears like it's going to change <laughs> your life <laughs> <laughs> in the room. <laughs> <laughs> just just gently smiling at each. other. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Other than Pinkerton, I don't know a lot about Weezer. Um, does anybody? But I, what I do know is that Rivers is a mega weird guy and that like every single album is a reaction to him uh, writing the last album. But I don't know. Does anyone is anyone else here like a Rivers aficionado? I wouldn't say I'm a Rivers aficionado, but I, I have listened to a podcast with him before, uh, oh. strangely enough. And I, the one thing that I really super remember about him is that he started out before Weezer as like a big time like noodler. He was a big like metal guitar guy. Um, that's like what his background is in. And so like a lot of Weezer up until, you know, these last decades or so when he started experimenting more with like metal guitar, apparently has been him just being like, I just got to like restrain myself and just play stupid pop riffs so that, you know, restrain one day I can noodle bang. again. All the way to the bay. No, Dude, no, no, no. Okay. If this is him unrestrained. That's nothing. What I was yeah, going to say. Every every guitar solo on this album that we listened to today sounds like every Weezer out, uh, guitar solo. He didn't he didn't fucking have it. He oh, no, I don't think I mean, I'm not saying that, uh, you know, I'm definitely not saying that this was like wailing on the guitar or nothing he like that. But unrestrained I mean, by dignity. So, yeah, sure. <laughs> two things I, I know about Rivers Cuomo that would be considered weird is he's notorious for dressing up like an old man when he was pursuing his master's degree. What? And what? like he went to like Harvard, didn't he? He went masters to, in what? I don't remember the exact thing, but he was getting a higher degree and he would it was post Weezer being famous. So he would dress up like an elderly old man to hide his identity. Not that he's that notable looking. So yeah. I think it's more of an ego. Not thing. at all. Two, I feel like this, I see him on the street in Williamsburg like five times a day. Yeah, he's like the most generic person. Well, to Two, be fair, this, Williamsburg, just everyone has it's an entire town built around looking like Rivers Cuomo. Yeah, right. Yeah. He or should have done his master's here. He wouldn't have had to do all the age. <laughs> yeah. He wouldn't have had to pull like an I think you should leave and be like, I don't want to be around anymore. <laughs> <laughs> um, he kept a spreadsheet. He keeps a spreadsheet for all lyrics that he thinks. I just of read this today. That with syllables and stuff that fits. So the reason the lyrics make no sense is because they literally are nonsense. And uh, there is a very famous MySpace rant that he wrote that you can still find copy and pasted on other places on the internet where people confronted Rivers Cuomo about the ethnicities of the women in his songs. And instead of being like, I don't do that he's like let me do a percentage breakdown of every ethnicity of every woman i have ever written about oh, no nothing weird about that <laughs> oh my extremely God. normal activity i know how to clear this up I, I i hear you guys i know how to clear it up i'm just gonna break it down by percentage i'm gonna go back and i'm gonna gawk at every single one of these women in the videos yes <laughs> i believe he said something along the lines of i'm tired of people accusing me of only being attracted to asian women let me break it down <laughs> And it would be like, it'd be like this song was about a woman who is of this ethnicity, and then this song is about this woman of this ethnicity. So if we do it the percentages, it's this much about this ethnicity, this one, like like a totally normal adjusted human right. being. <laughs> this I think is the like funnier Elizabeth version of that. Warren getting her twenty three and me to prove the truth. <laughs> like what if he what if he broke it down by like country too, and he's like, well, her yeah. family. Chinese and if anything you're racist for for <laughs> lumping them all together right. yeah. this is the kind of guy who's like I'm not racist I've never dated a woman in my ethnic group <laughs> exactly exactly so keep that all in mind as we approach this work of art <laughs> <laughs> man like <laughs> I was I was going to try to come in and be just like a little bit nice about this, but you just 
everything I just learned about <laughs> this guy. I want to kick him into the sun a little bit. Yeah, no, yeah. no, it's dunking on Rivers Cuomo. Fair it's game. it's a That's national pastime season. at this point. It's like it's <laughs> you, you grow up doing it. You know, it's up there with like swimming and like r- yeah. learning to ride a bike. <laughs> Like you're gonna rip on Rivers Cuomo. You take point. away ripping on Rivers Cuomo. You take away our culture as music <laughs> aficionados. Let's get into this album. It's called Van Weezer. I think because it's a reference to Van Halen, and that's the the term they chose to let you know that they're gonna start rocking. I'd assumed Finally. that it was gonna be in Dutch. <laughs> von von Visa. Von Visa. Von Weezer. Yeah, that's what I thought. <laughs> van Halen is my favorite band. I like we've covered endless Van Halen songs on Two Minutes to Late Night, our talk show. I have a guitar over there that is painted like a Van Halen in honor of Van Halen. They're my favorite. There's a picture of them hanging over said guitars. Dude. Okay, but Rivers took it one step further. He said, we're going to take part of their name, and that's an homage. <laughs> <laughs> so, what? what? Checkmate. I, I Vernon, could, when yeah. are you changing your name to Van Olds? <laughs> Dude, I'm already, nice I already answer. have, like, such a hard time <laughs> with my... I have, <laughs> technically, I have, like, three last names. It's a whole kerfuffle. I'm not adding any of this. I got it under control. <laughs> I'm just if I if I do something else to my last name, I'm like going to go to jail. <laughs> gonna be a problem. There's um, no jail in Hollywood, baby. Yeah, <laughs> no, I think um, there is. Oh, shit. Oh, <laughs> shit. oh fuck. I got to make some calls. <laughs> Everybody get your affairs in order. Um, <laughs> so is this album supposed to s- is, is it named this because it's supposed to sound Van Halen E? That's what it's, I assume. What I what I read was that they had been going on like press, you know, uh, to- not tours because it's pandemic, but like uh, they, they've been like going around to like the journalists and whatever being like, you know, this album, we're really like coming back to our heavy rock sound and we're like taking on more of a metal influence. And like but- it's an homage not just to Van Halen, but to like <laughs> 80s hair overall and like this kind of general idea. And And <laughs> I mean, you guys know music journalists at this point, like either it's like printed verbatim exactly like that, or it's people being like, this doesn't sound like anything. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) What heavy rock sound? When did Weezer ever have a heavy riff? Well, what they're referring to is maladroit, which is (laughs) about as tepid as this. No, but Katie, you're right. It's like, it's like every other song on this album just sounds like Ringo Starr dying of a heroin overdose. (laughs) 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 Yeah. There's nothing hard rock about it. It's, it's it, I, I it blew my mind when I read that because the only heavy elements on this album are a li- like I said a literal crazy train cover and what, what appears to be the arpeggio setting on a keyboard. Yeah, dude. <laughs> why? Okay, I have I, I'm like <laughs> waiting to get into the crazy train. Not even a cover. They just play part of P- crazy train and then re- re- like. River sings something else. They don't yeah, even about play like fish it. or something. They're not. They don't something even about play Spider Man or something. Yeah. No, that's not the song. But it, it, no, that's the first song where he's. This is why I said like it's like half like uh, like half a suicide note is like half of these songs feel like him like uh, getting mad that everyone is mad at him all the time. Like Hero <laughs> is like. Is like I don't need to be a hero, and uh, I don't need whatever. to wear this cape. I don't need to wear this cape. So, or like, I don't. I do know that <laughs> people so are constantly so much money. It's so hard. <laughs> <laughs> but it's half songs like Hero, where he it's like kind of either it's either like a typical Weezer song or him like you know, reacting to people who do like don't like him or the change in Weezer's music. And then the other half seem like children's songs. Yeah, it's where they're really trying creepy. where they're trying. It seems like a children's song where they are trying to 
which if that was the idea going into this, like, let's make a Weezer album. That's like because I the we one thing I do know about Weezer catfish the TV show. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, totally. The one thing that's weird that I know about Weezer these days is that all of my a lot of my friends who have like kids now, their favorite band is Weezer. Mm-hmm. No. Like all they of our, have a very, they surprisingly have a very strong and devout following to this day. Like I always thought yeah. that they'd kind of like fairly washed up by now, and like you know, yeah. not really a lot of people going to say. I saw pictures of of a show they did outside of City Field, and it was like fucking packed. It was like it, like you couldn't see the end of the crowd from the from the stage shots. I they mean, still they're still a huge draw. They're on TV. Yeah. And- that's yeah. like a legitimate well, bummer to me to hear <laughs> they have young fans. I'm like, oh no. <laughs> well, that's I am. Um, <laughs> yeah. I just have one more general thing to say. I'm sorry, I'm like occupying a lot of this, but I had a lot of thoughts and feelings. Uh, something I noticed is when indie or pop punk bands get older, all their albums sound like this because they're writing songs from the perspective of someone still like 17 for some fucking reason. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And they yeah. really wanted this to sound like a metal album when metal dudes age up. I mean, this is a broad stroke because not all of them do this. But generally, if you're talking about the devil and like medical malpractice, you're still going <laughs> to write about the devil and medical <laughs> malpractice. And that doesn't really that age is fine. It's it's still the same thing. I know it does get like increasingly stranger the more Weezer sings about like kissing under the bleachers and stuff. Oh, like I, 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 that you I can count on up- in this life. Death, taxes, the devil and <laughs> medical malpractice. Sorry, I just had to say that. <laughs> I um I looked up one of the videos from this uh for the it's I guess it's the single, it's the third track, the um not the hero one, the other the, the other the big game. song from this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the video for that is a like weird little puppet like from that Interpol video, but like it looks more like um uh like beaker. Um, from the Muppets. Mm-hmm. They did do a video with the Muppets, by the way. I don't know if you guys knew that. But uh, it's like a weird, like, like crinkly little uh, little Muppet that goes to a house party that's full of, like, s- like teenagers that are just, like, partying oh. around and, like, making oh. out with each other and getting no, drunk and down. stuff. And, like, Ooh. that kind of shit. Like, I, I mean, l- you know, I, I feel like we can't really say... Uh, <laughs> But I mean, like we can all kind of like put two and two together there, right? We all knew that guy who was. <laughs> oh my like, god! I just yeah, hang that's... out with high schoolers because, like, they get me. Look, that's who pays for our music. I can't change that, you know. And so sometimes uh. I buy them beer. <laughs> None of this band's members should be legally allowed within a mile of a school. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> Being a loser should require that you maintain a distance from a school. Uh, <laughs> absolutely. Calling it now. But going off of that, if these like the songs that are about like being in high school, creepy. But when it's like <laughs> if the goal of this album, because the I'm trying to figure out like what the I, I know they said a purpose for it, but it clear <laughs> it did not translate at all. If the goal of this album was to be let's write like an album specifically for like kids so that they can like, you know, get into and we'll do some like old Van Halen riffs or we'll play crazy train for a little bit so that maybe their parents will like show them the bands that we liked. Like it's sort of like as an homage to like trying to, or just trying to get kids to listen to old, uh, to classic rock. That is something that I, I can like, I understand that as a thought process. But this album no, you're is giving them so-, so much credit if you think that that's what. <laughs> oh, no, I don't <laughs> think it's like such a nice reading of that. Yeah. Like, oh, I hope that they'll get into what I love. No, 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 no. Will not stop putting out albums. Yeah, this is their <laughs> 15th yeah. Do have you know how many thoughts? <laughs> Do you know how many albums they've put out since the last time we did a podcast together? Five. Seventeen. Five. And it's only been two years since we've done a podcast and together. Seven of them are self-titled. That's insane. He just keeps cranking them out. The Teal album is all covers that have absolutely no perspective. There's like no Ugh. change to them. He doesn't even like change the guitar effects. It literally just sounds like Rivers Cuomo karaoke. He's just like, okay, no, I got another one. It's okay, I got another one. It's about when I was a kid, I was riding bikes. Okay, let's go. (laughs) Exactly. Before this album coming out, the last thing I remember about uh, Weezer was someone was like Twitter bugging them 
to cover Toto by Africa. Yeah. And uh -huh. I remember oh. initially what happened. And it was the it is the only moment in my entire life where I was like, oh, shit, maybe Weezer's pretty cool because they responded with. A cover of uh, Rosanna <laughs> after going viral for people asking them to do Africa. And I was like, yeah. OK, that's really funny. That's that a funny move. Only, that's a funny. But then move I, I have the terrible news, Jordan. Oh, no, I know no. that is. <laughs> You're going to want to sit down for this, Jordan. <laughs> You're going to want to sit down. They made a whole album. <laughs> they made a whole album and they eventually did cover Africa. And I was like, oh, Rivers. It's the open song. Yeah. On I have a question for the group. Why do straight people love Africa by Toto? They love it so much. I think it had like a it, meme status for a moment. Um, it is I don't a bop. know. It, it, it is kind of a bop. Yeah, I got to admit. To. It's, I've heard it. So if you go see indie wrestling shows, they will play that song and all the men in the audience lose their mind. Yeah. Like, they're being, <laughs> like a spell is being cast. And I've never quite seen anything like it. And I I'm not saying like it's not like an OK song, but the the rapture really yeah. is an enigma. To well, me. it's like uh, it's like Sweet Caroline for Gen Xers. <laughs> oh. I have a theory about okay. why it's so popular. Like we were we're from a generation of seeing uh like album collections in TV commercials, buzz ballads. Mm, now yes. there was one oh, that was right. very specific that uh was like it, it it was full of like you know Toto uh some like really soft new wave mo mom rock mostly there was mm -hmm. just like a mom rock collection and it for sure had I remember it had like. Toto and it had like Fleetwood Mac. And I think that Did it have I that, think that sting song that went like <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> wait, yeah. Wait, can you keep singing that song? How does it go? <laughs> you know, it has like uh <laughs> it's like he was like, Oi, I'm sting and now I'm spiritual. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. But I think that those I, I think that a lot of like meme or just like uh, our, our generation's like uh, appreciation for uh, like that music kind of is spawned from just watching small clips of that song. Right. Uh -huh. On mm -hmm. and commercials. Yeah, and pure moods. Yeah. Pure oh, moods. Yes. I my favorite was fired up personally. Oh, do you remember yeah. there was the one that was like uh, like hair metal ballads and it was yeah, like yeah. it was Monster all of ballads. the Monster Ballads. Yes, yes, yes. yes. And the tagline was like, because every bad boy has, has a, a soft, soft side. side. Yeah. <laughs> and it's like a like a soft focus of like Brett Brad Michaels. Michaels. Yes. It's, it's burned into my mind. Burned into my mind. <laughs> it's, you know, even based on that, like these this album doesn't even sound like those. Songs. It doesn't even sound That's like the no. soft hair metal songs it has no perspective i don't under okay yeah i mean the one that the one that you gotta talk about and we've we've kind of like teased it a little bit is, is that they did crazy train and they they do the riff and then they like tone it out like they're a dj and then they just sing a song about fish over it and that i feel like kind of really sums up like the the uh like level of tribute that they're doing to 80s hair metal in in this album right yeah. Is that the one where the octopus like waves hello? Yes. Yes. Uh -huh. Um I was like I I can't think of a more offensive thing to do as a like <laughs> fan of men. <laughs> you just sing your own words over crazy train. Yeah. The progenitor of heavy metal. Not even it about It's like everyone's shoes. first real riff they learn on the guitar. <laughs> it's the first one that you get and you're like, damn, look at me playing a real riff. Yeah. <laughs> you play smoke on the water and then you work up to crazy train and then yeah. you're like, I'm allowed to go to guitar center by myself. Yes, yeah. uh -huh. <laughs> I'm going to go play the instruments in the store out loud. People are going to love it. Yeah, playing this. I All the dudes are going to pat me on the back. Um, they know <laughs> it's hard. To I get up work at 630. <laughs> yeah. They did it's hit on me. So anyway, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. creeps. <laughs> <laughs> they told me my hands were too small for an electric guitar. <laughs> A bunch of Rivers Cuomo's working at Guitar Center, if you know yeah. what I mean. 
they're like wouldn't you rather play bass and i'm like i'm not a fucking bass player how dare you and that's bigger that's a bigger you gotta spoken like yeah you need bigger hands bigger hands for you need bigger hands for bass you remember they made those daisy rock guitars they were cute they They were were very cute cute. i always wanted one yeah very cute all right transitioning from blue dream which isn't it's like that song is a ripoff of Crazy Train. At least they could have like sung about another type of train on it. But yeah, no. mm. a regular train, a sane train, sane <laughs> train. I'd take sane train. I sure. I would take working on it train. <laughs> I would take working Thomas on my the doing train. Best. Thomas the Tank Engine Man. Something. Come <laughs> on. There's one thing I don't know, but I think the only, the only song on this album that kind of has anything related to Van Halen that isn't just a tapping solo is the end of the game. It's song number three. They play like a, like a like some big major chords that kind of sound like Panama and then immediately just transition into just like, ah, and now we're Weezer again. Yeah, they do that all over the album. There's a couple of times where like you'll pick up because I, you know, I, I listened to it once and then I read the thing about how they're trying to be heavy again. And then I listened to it again with that in mind because I was like, that doesn't sound right to me. And I listened to it a second <laughs> time. And every time you hear a riff start and you're like, oh, OK, I see what they're doing here. And then they're just like, and by the way, just in case you forgot, we are Weezer. <laughs> you know what I you know what else I, I heard? I, I remember reading that hash pipe. The Weezer single uh-huh. was originally written for Ozzy Osbourne. Interesting. <laughs> what? Yeah, I believe that. Ozzy I actually 100 percent believe that. They were like, we wrote it for him, but for some reason he didn't oh, want it. For some reason, yeah. <laughs> it boggles the mind. <laughs> <laughs> I 100 percent buy that, though. That's very funny. That's it's so funny. Could have paid for one of Sharon's faces. So <laughs> I don't know. Really. Ash Pipe? That's a big, that's a huge song. It was a huge, huge single. Hit. That was a I know big that ass song. song. I don't know Weezer songs. I do know that song. Yeah. But I you know what I was know thinking? It, it, Would you know it if it's homie. an Aussie song, though? Well, I, it's really, I can't really say. In an alternate universe, you know. Yeah. So many factors exists. would be different. <laughs> yeah. You know, I probably have different <laughs> hair. Um, <laughs> Living a whole different <laughs> life. Life is different. Who, who can say? Who can I'd say? I'd be a what, lawyer. Oh, definitely wow. in that reality. You'd be telling your kid not to listen to that song. Yeah, don't listen to that hash pipe. It's about drugs. Uh, drugs, <laughs> I'm and it's sorry, written it's by. It's about skateboarding. Half pipe. <laughs> it's written by a man who married a bat. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but you know what I was thinking was um, regarding hash pipe and the green album overall is like, I remember when I was a kid that everybody would say like the only two albums you have to hear of Weezer are, are the blue album and Pinkerton. Right. And then the rest of it is, is crap. Right. And then as they've gone and they've persistently put out way too many albums every year, <laughs> like it seems like they're trying this strategy where they're slowly, like relentlessly chipping away at their audience to, to like accept another album as part of the good Weezer albums. <laughs> Because I, I talked to a friend of mine who's like a big time Weezer fan. And he's like, he's like, yeah, Maladroit is the last good Weezer album. No. <laughs> it's like their fifth album. It's insane. Yeah. I also read in an interview trying to research for this episode that Rivers in an interview described this album as blue album ish, which man, the hubris on that. Dude. <laughs> there was one song where they end, uh, where they, they they end it like Buddy Holly. I remember the end of the chorus is like <laughs> the chord progression of Buddy Holly. And I was like, oh, yeah, you just you did that again. Yeah, one of these songs opens very similar to Island in the Sun. <laughs> God. God damn it. Lucia. How many things will they lay waste to? Before <laughs> <laughs> I've got to say, I like I'm not I'm not like the biggest Ozzy Osbourne fan or anything, but I did feel like a defensive flare up when I heard <laughs> <laughs> the riff for Crazy Train over like <laughs> Octopus's Garden if it was written by pedophiles. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Speaking of pedophilia, should we talk about Precious Metal Girl? Yeah. 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 Who is this, this is a song, song for? 
that okay. I listened to it and I was like, and I audibly, because I was listening in my car and I was like, oh, just like halfway <laughs> through the song. And I had this flash of like, and listen, I'm not trying to brag, but men have written songs about me before. And I was mm. like, I could just picture like, <laughs> oh shit. Like, just imagine you're at a show and your boyfriend or this dude you're dating is on stage and he starts playing the song. But before he's like, this one's dedicated to Emily. And then he plays it. I would fucking die of embarrassment. I would jump that <laughs> dude the second he stepped off stage. But, the, if but to add on top of it, he's not your boyfriend and he's 55 years old. <laughs> and he's 72 years old. Yes. No, Disgusting. disgusting and he died in the civil war <laughs> like, that's right it's so all the timelines dis- are adding up <laughs> also i'll put this to the ladies of the show you guys have strong personalities so i'm sure you've had stuff projected on you all the time by other dudes and that's what this <laughs> song feels like to me where they saw a girl in like a fishnet shirt and he's like right Ooh my precious metal girl. Oh, this oh. is the stuff we'll do together. You love Aerosmith like me. Like, it just- You could be in Faster <laughs> Pussycat, Kill Kill. Yeah. Ugh. Ugh. I have, Ugh. I, I, I think that's Ooh. almost like a charitable read. I actually don't even think he ever saw the girl that this is about. I oh, think he no. just made You watched Gem in the Holograms <laughs> and then he wrote this. It's from his <laughs> weird, creepy spreadsheet. Let me tell you, if a man has a spreadsheet with like, phrases that humans use like there's something going on there (laughs) that's a deal breaker yeah (laughs) i also think like adults maybe probably i think definitely uh shouldn't use the word precious to to talk about somebody they're attracted to this is not a word you use yeah that's for babies yeah that is for for that's for kids (laughs) unless you're referencing the film precious (laughs) by sapphire by Sapphire. Based on the novel Push by Sapphire. Oh, <laughs> That's right. That's right. That's Fucked what it up was. that timely rip. <laughs> <laughs> also, just like the like trying to use the term precious metal in this context and make it is already like 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 you're a geo nerd and then you make it like a, <laughs> a play on words like my God. Precious Metal should be a baby metal album. Yeah, it should. <laughs> <laughs> Cover a little bit. Precious Metal, because even hard babies have a soft side. <laughs> <Perfect>. <laughs> Lucy, for your reference, baby metal is a Japanese pop group, but I, I like this idea that it's like next to baby Mozart at like <laughs> the store. <laughs> Can we talk about this album cover a little bit? This is this is one of the most uh, like batshit insane things I've ever seen. Um, yeah, it literally looks like someone melted the Van Halen font and the Weezer font together. It has a lightning bolt that is like that doesn't fit properly. They just made it really long in the middle. They yeah. make it look aged. They make it look I, aged like it's big. Well, and then it's like surrounded by real lightning bolts. So I it's real, like in case you didn't get the idea of lightning. Yeah. But I don't <laughs> reinforce that a little bit. They're millionaires. Couldn't they hire a graphic, a graphic designer? I don't understand. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no. Nope. Like like a freshman year Photoshop project. It looks like a mistake. It looks like they accidentally like didn't apply the font all the way. Like some right, of it is, is like placeholder. some of it's italicized, some of it's straight up and like nowhere that it seems like it's supposed to be. Rivers sent this to a graphic designer was like, yeah, something like this. You know, it's like lightning, <laughs> like real lightning and also fake lightning. I don't know. And do something with it. And then that dude never got back to him. And uh, they were like, let's just go with what I did. <laughs> this is what happens when just like each member of the band emails ideas to one guy. <laughs> yeah. And it just comes out as like, uh, I don't know, you got, uh, I was told to put like museum lightning by one guy. And then the other guy said that this clip art lightning was his favorite lightning. So that's there too. Uh, I don't know. So, someone <laughs> said it should look new, but I, but also then another guy was like, can it look old? Like it's been in a <laughs> record case. Yeah, it's like he went to the designer and was like, look, I like I, I, I want Metallica lightning and I want ACDC lightning. And like, I, I will not compromise. I want both. I really want to hammer this this concept home. 
possible. Metallica lightning and AC lightning. With the, with the glow of girls, 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 neon sign. Oh my god. Maniacs. The no there is zero coherence uh of like sound or lyrical writing like this seems like a real cry for help like i remember <laughs> when i was listening to i need some of that i was like i i like is, is it the one dementia? that he's just, like daddy all the time in oh I, yeah, yeah. Dad. Oh, oh my disgusting. god disgusting i forgot about the oh. daddy one. it's so gross it's, who's <laughs> daddy in that one if rivers hey. cuomo had friends this would they would call him after listening to this they'd be like hey man is everything all right dude you need you know? to he's yeah. like Twenty twenty talk was to somebody. Rough, yeah, <laughs> it's true. We all we all had to go there. <laughs> in in retrospect, it is surprising that Andrew Cuomo was the first Cuomo to get in that sort of trouble. You know, that's a good point. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think Rivers Cuomo's nipples are pierced? <laughs> No, that no, has be- those magnetic ones you get at Spencer's. Yeah, I was gonna say he's he's definitely too much of a coward to get a piercing. <laughs> yeah, no, th- based on song, t- like he's getting horny for back patches. He doesn't have. <laughs> oh. oh my god, he does talk about her having a back patch in that creepy song. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. He he says he's like your vest with a patch on it. I'm like, get out of here, fuck. <laughs> It's making me so mad just to think about it. Yeah, no woman who is appropriately his age has a back patch vest. Well, (laughs) let's not throw slurs around. (laughs) (laughs) Don't have any conclusions here. Let's let's keep the focus on Rivers himself. Um, (laughs) No need for collateral damage here. (laughs) Oh, I didn't mean that as shade to the women. I'm just saying that he clearly is not writing about saying, women who some are. Some people may have aged out out of uh, making crop tops out of band t-shirts and, and dyeing their hair, but they are thoroughly just acting like their birthday isn't this month. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. All right. Well, let's wrap this shit up. Um, let's talk. I, I'm going to let's let's do favorite songs. And uh, how does and figure out if this, where this album ranks uh, <laughs> between like this and the worst, the other worst album you've ever heard in your life? I get if I have to pick a favorite song, uh, it's the end of the game because it's the only song that has a Van Halen riff in it. I don't count tapping. The only thing, <laughs> the only thing that's different about Weezer's guitar playing is the beginning of this song. Uh, and that he does tapping sometimes. That's it. Nothing else was different. But yeah, the end of the game, I guess, is the best song. Uh, I hate that I've heard Precious Metal Girl. Uh, I hate <laughs> that I know that song now. Um, and I don't like I will say it's not the worst album I've ever heard. Like, yeah, it's yeah. like did like it made me go like, ugh. but it was if I have to give it some credit, it's surprisingly listenable. It's just back. Like, I will never remember it, but it's yeah. fine. It's like nothing is too jarring. It's a very basic pop record with just a very confusing title and idea behind it. <laughs> Emily. Okay. So my least favorite song is also Precious Metal Girl. It's fucking disgusting. Um, I listened to it twice Uh, I think my favorite song is actually one more hit which we didn't talk about but I listened to the album twice today and both times when that song was on I was like oh like that's kind of cool but then of course there's the part where he's like saying the word daddy and I was like well that's gross pretty much I agree (laughs) with you about the listenability of this album and that it was only when I actually paid attention to any of the lyrics that I was like ugh I mean, and also there were other parts musically, but there were parts musically that were totally fun and poppy. And like you said, listenable. And I was like, okay, if I was, you know, in a coma, (laughs) (laughs) I probably still wouldn't want to listen to this album, to be honest. And how, I don't know off the top of my head what the worst album I've ever heard is, but I just remembered this nightmare where this old lady was moving in sort of slow motion, but I couldn't move at all. And she was trying to stab me. And, um, (laughs) 
this was better than that. Cool. All cool. right. Better than a David Lynch freak out. So I have trouble picking specific tracks from this album because as I told the group before, um, I had a really hard time noticing when songs changed or say when the album ended, <laughs> like it just felt like one long blur, which in some ways makes it pretty unoffensive because compared to the worst album I've ever heard, one that a lot of this group can uh, relate to, which is Metallica's Lulu, where every 20 seconds is complete agony. <laughs> At least this is like, like Emily said, if you don't pay attention to the words, you're just like, ah, it's like background music in a soap opera. You know what I mean? It's just, mm -hmm. it's just like a fake TV show yeah. or like you're shopping in H and M. What's the one with the guitars in the beginning? <laughs> uh, that's the one. Uh, the, yeah, the end of the game, like Jordan said, and uh, I, I, yeah, that metal girl song. It's it simply must go. Abolish all prisons except for Qu Cuomo being thrown in there for writing that song. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Every time we say Cuomo, I think we're gonna throw the governor in there, and I'm I like, keep yeah. thinking of the governor. Yeah, <laughs> he could be thrown <laughs> in there too. That's fine. He should go to prison too. He yes, should go to yeah. prison. Yeah, yeah. choice though. If you had to kill one of the Cuomos, which one are you killing? <laughs> oh, uh, actually. That's Andrew, Andrew. Ooh, <laughs> Mary fuck kill Chris yes. Andrew Rivers. <laughs> oh, definitely fucking Chris. If uh, yeah, yeah, he's on the table. <laughs> <laughs> on the Not table. Not even a in one of these I games. Just... <laughs> yeah, I would. Yeah, all right. We're fucking Chris. Uh, I would marry. I would marry Rivers because that means he couldn't like. But then he's writing precious metal girl songs about you. Yeah, but you're taking sure, but on the sins of the world. In but that I sense. would be saving the world because I'm like, he won't be writing songs about you specifically. And I yeah, want New York to be better. So I'm going to kill Cuomo. Well, <laughs> yeah, of, course. of course. Well, Honorable. we're probably going to beep that. <laughs> <laughs> we're not beeping shit. We're behind a paywall. Lucy. <laughs> Lucy. Um, I would say that the one that I didn't like least <laughs> was all the good ones. <laughs> all, all the good ones I found to be like pretty listenable, even though it's probably about like selling children and Wayfair furniture. <laughs> but, um, <Ooh. laughs> but, but, uh, and, and uh, precious metal girl is a terrible and disgusting song, but I think I still have to give it to blue dream. I mean, that was like, I gasped in offense. <laughs> How dare you do this to my friend Ozzy? <laughs> John, did you hear what they did to your song? <laughs> Sorry, my friends of his call him John. <laughs> uh, yeah, I got to say, like the first three songs of this, I think are like fairly catchy and listenable and pretty good, despite sounding like you know, what they play on, on, on a wave runner to little St. James Island. Um, <laughs> it, is, it is pretty catchy, so, but I, yeah, I think. Oh, oh no. A wave runner. <laughs> That's exactly what the album art looks like. It looks like wave runner paint. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I think probably the worst song is, um, uh, yeah, I guess precious precious metal girl. I'm gonna I'm gonna give it to that one. But yeah, the first three songs pretty pretty listenable. Yeah, they're fine. <laughs> <Yeah>. Fine. <laughs> uh, and I will say, compared to the worst album I've ever heard, which is of course Lulu by Metallica, uh, not the worst album I've ever heard. Not even the worst uh, Weezer album that I heard today. I, I you know caught up on a <laughs> little bit of their catalog uh, <laughs> oh, coming Jerry. into this just to like kind of see how this compares. This is like the best album they've put out in years. <laughs> <laughs> and that should that's, that should really tell okay. you something. <laughs> yeah, I would nothing. also say it's better than Lulu, which physically burns to listen to. Yeah, I was like, I just I remembering it is it. bringing me great sadness. <laughs> Based on what Jeremy just said, like, yeah, there's a pretty good description of the podcast. We're trying to find good things, but we just kind of ripped. <laughs> 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 we ripped an album that we think is fine to shreds. <laughs> <laughs> What are you going to do? Nice. We're, we're yeah. coming for the reasoning of why it's just OK. It was phoned <laughs> in and inappropriate at the same time. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I've never seen someone so lazily be gross. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
<laughs> Listen, I'm going to take out a lot of shit, but you get one take. <laughs> Wild. Well, that does it for our first episode. If you listen to the album along with us, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> Whoops. Um, if you want to find out more about Two Minutes to Late Night, the other show that we make, go to two minutes to late night dot com. It's got, uh, you know, links to the YouTube channel and all the social bullshit. You, you know how to use Linktree. It's 2021. Unless you're my mom, it won't be confusing. Hey, folks, you can find me on Twitter at, at Jeremy Thunder and you can check out my other podcast. It is called Generation Loss and it is a show about movies. So you're at the movies. I'm uh, you can find me on Twitter at Katie Rose and you can listen to my other podcast, Fallen Out Super. Super. It's about anime. Jeremy used to be on it. Not anymore. Not Just anymore, me, baby. Don't email Katie. Don't listen. email Katie. <laughs> Movies and anime, the other the other two things that podcasts can be about. The yeah. two genders. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you can follow me on Instagram at the Steinbag or on Twitter at the Steinbag. Ooh. Ooh. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at a pretty big mouth and listen to my other podcast, not about anime or movies. It's a paranormal comedy podcast called Ghosts to Show You. But I also have a link tree with all my other shit that you can go to as well. You also do have a movie podcast. I also have a movie podcast. I'm not going <laughs> to plug all my shit. It's too much. <laughs> go to the link tree. Oh, yeah. I'm also wearing my own merch. So you can buy this, too. Honestly, once you fall in love with the podcast. Me, too. Are you wearing your own merch? Yeah, technically. <laughs> Okay, well. Yeah. Well, I didn't get the memo. His. Nobody told me. No one fucking said anything. <laughs> <laughs> you're wearing this Called stupid dog taking shirt. Taking initiative. <laughs> I just don't have your mind. Uh... And if you want to check out our other show, Two Minutes to Late Night, go to two minutes to late night.com. And if you actually want to hear a good version of Crazy Train, we covered it with Chelsea Wolf and you, Ryan, who's now the drummer of the arms. You don't know who that is, but you should. All right, I'm going to go wash out the memory of this album uh, with some prints. Good night, everybody. Bye. Good night. Bye. Bye, bye, bye.